Is Mercedes really going to build an electric G-Class? Well, it looks like the answer could be a big, fat, heavy off-roading yes. In this video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about this new car and show you exclusive pictures of what it could look like. Anyway, I'm Matt Watson and you are watching Car Wow. Buying a new car? Then head to Car Wow and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. Car Wow your one-stop car buying comparison site. The Mercedes G-Class is one of the most famous off-roaders in the world ever. It's right up there with cars like the Land Rover Defender, the Toyota Land Cruiser, and the Jeep Wrangler. And every G-Class, or G-Wagon, as it used to be called, has stuck to the same basic formula. They've all had four-wheel drive, a beefy engine, a square body, and a separate ladder chassis. Simple. But Mercedes did make a few changes when it released the very latest model in 2018. This had independent front suspension for the first time ever. Every other G-Class before it had a solid front axle like a Jeep Wrangler. This old fashioned design is great for off-roading because it lets the whole axle tilt more to give you more grip on bumpy terrain. Basically a bump pushes up one wheel and it pushes the other one down into the ground for added traction. Now this is called axle articulation. But the new G-Class's independent setup makes it much better to drive on the road because then the front wheels can move up and down individually so you don't get a whole shaky effect like you do with a rigid axle. Anyway, most G-Wagon drivers nowadays actually drive on the road rather than off-road, don't they? They're all for show, let's be bloody honest about it. There's another benefit to that independent suspension setup on the new G-Class. You see, it allowed Mercedes to fit normal rack and pinion steering instead of the old car's recirculating ball system. Now this has made a huge difference to how the car drives. It doesn't feel like a truck anymore. It feels like a proper modern SUV. Well, sort of. But now Mercedes is going a step further because it could be about to rip out the G-Class's petrol and diesel engines and give it electric motors. What? That'd be like taking the explosions out of a Michael Bay movie, surely? What's going on? And how are they gonna do this? Well, Mercedes has reportedly registered the EQG name. An EQ are the letters Mercedes uses when it's talking about its electric cars, like the EQA, the EQB, and the EQC. I mean, these cars are electric versions of the GLA, the GLB, and the GLC. So the new EQG trademark means Mercedes could be planning to make an electric G-Class. In fact, they definitely are. But the big question is, will this new car be an electric version of the regular G-Class, or will it be a completely new model using the same new platform as the EQS Saloon? Well, Mercedes has confirmed it's working on an SUV version of the EQS, which could look something like this. So it's definitely possible that this new EV platform can be scaled up to make something the size of a G-Class. But I don't think Mercedes will go down this route, actually, mainly because the latest G-Class is still pretty new. Most cars don't tend to last more than 10 years before they get replaced, but not so with the G-Class. The current G-Class is only three years old, so it should still have about 17 years left before it gets replaced. And this means that Mercedes must have designed it knowing it was going to build an electric version at some point in the future. So I think there's a very strong chance the new EQG will be based on the same ladder chassis as the normal G-Class, and that means it probably won't look too different to the regular car either. In fact, here's my exclusive image of what the Mercedes EQG could look like. Hmm. It could have a similar square body to the standard car and the same flat bonnet, but the front end will probably get a new bumper, new headlights, and a new grille, like on the EQS. And because Mercedes probably won't change a great deal about the normal G-Class, a future EQG should still be brilliant off-road. In fact, it could be even better than the standard car because electric motors deliver all their torque from zero RPM. And that's like having the world's best low range mode in an off-roader. Do you know what? I tested a Mercedes G-Class against a Jeep Wrangler and a Land Rover Defender in an off-road battle to see which was best. And you might be surprised by the result. There should be a link popping out just up there, somewhere like that. You'll be able to watch the video if you click on that, or there's a link in the description. Anyway, let's carry on. You see, most people who would buy an electric G-Class probably won't actually go off-road in it anyway. There aren't any plugs in the woods. So what about on-road performance? Well, Mercedes hasn't just trademarked the EQG badge. Reports suggest it's also registered the EQG 560 and EQG 580 names. And that gives me a big clue about the new car's performance. I know that the EQS 580 Saloon makes 523 horsepower from its two electric motors, so you can bet the new EQG 
580 will also have two motors making about 523 horsepower. So how quick is it going to be? Well, Mercedes says the EQS 580 will do 0 to 60 in about 4.3 seconds, which isn't bad for a luxury limousine. But I've timed that car from 0 to 60 and it did it in less than four seconds. Now, if you haven't seen that video, there should be another link just popping out there, up there, top right hand corner of the screen. You click on that, you can go watch it. And my in-depth review of the EQS. We'll go for a ride in it. Anyway, an electric EQG probably won't be quite that quick. After all, the normal G-Class is a huge, heavy car, and it'll get probably even heavier if Mercedes fills it with batteries. And it won't be quite as quick as today's AMG G63 either. That car has 585 horsepower and does 0 to 60 in 4.5 seconds. But there is a strong chance that the new EQG could do 0 to 60 in just under 5 seconds. That would be really impressive for a huge SUV, especially one that isn't even an AMG. But what about the new car's range? That's probably more important for most people than raw performance when it comes to an electric car. Well, Mercedes hasn't confirmed anything, but it makes sense for the EQG to use similar batteries to the EQS. After all, if it's going to use that car's motors, why not pinch its batteries as well? At the moment, you can only get the EQS with a huge 108 kilowatt hour battery. This gives it up to 478 miles of range. But even if Mercedes manages to cram this massive battery into the EQG, don't expect it to have the same range. After all, the EQS is one of the most aerodynamic production cars ever. And the G-Class just isn't, is it? But it might be able to match the 340 miles of range you get out of a Tesla Model X Plaid. Mercedes has said it'll also build a version of the EQS with a smaller 90 kilowatt hour battery, which could also end up in the EQG, possibly in an EQG 560. This will give you about 400 miles of range in the EQS, which is about 80 less than the version with the 108 kilowatt hour battery. So a 90 kilowatt version of the EQG will probably have around 250 miles of range. Both versions could get the same charging take as the EQS, so you should be able to charge the EQG using a 200 kilowatt public fast charger. Sure, these aren't as rapid as the 270 kilowatt chargers you can use to charge an Audi e-tron GT or Porsche Taycan but they can still add about 186 miles of range to your car in 15 minutes. But how much is all this gonna cost, eh? Well, the cheapest Mercedes EQS will go on sale later this year and will cost about the same as an entry-level S-Class, so about £80,000. And it would make sense that an electric EQG would also cost about the same as a regular G-Class. That means you'll need to cough up about £100,000 to get your hands on one. But don't try and put your name down yet. Mercedes has its hands full, launching a load of new electric cars, including an EQE saloon and an EQS SUV. So it'll probably be a few years before the EQG is ready. And that's if Mercedes does actually decide to build one. But what do you think? Do you love the idea of a proper off-roader like the EQG? Or should Mercedes just stick to giving it petrol and diesel engines? Let me know in the comments below. Hey, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Also, let me know if any other videos you'd like me to do in the comments below. If you click there, you can watch some more videos. And if you click on that box there, you can actually sign up to the Car Wow newsletter, where we'll keep you up to date of all the latest news and reviews from the car world in between these video uploads. So just click on that, sign up, it's completely free. And of course, you can cancel anytime you want to. Thanks for watching. See you next time.